Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to take one giant leap for kids everywhere and make our very own parents. Sadly, we can't make the human versions, but we can make one for our little enemy guy right here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to first rename this guy, give it a more parent-sounding name, like Master Enemy. And then we're going to double click on him, I'm gonna open up this editor, and the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to make this more flexible because it's now going to be a parent class. So we want it to have a lot of flexibility with the things that we can do with the mesh, with damage, with just about anything you can think of. And from that we're going to spawn all kinds of little baby children. So first thing I'm going to do right here is I'm going to right click. This is where we were causing damage to our player. And I'm going to promote this to a variable. And we're going to call this damage. And we're going to make this compile it something a little bit more reasonable like 15. So we're just going to set that. That's the default value. And I will show you guys later how we can change that when we start making children. Next thing I'm going to do is get an event begin play by right clicking and search for event begin play. And instead of having this cast node here, I want to replace that with a reference to our player character. So I'm going to delete it from here. So you can hit control X and then I can paste it up here, control V. And I'm going to pull off and have a sequence because we will probably end up doing many things off of this begin play. So I'm going to just connect this up here and drag off of here and say get player character. And now we're going to create a reference to our player character by right clicking here, promoting to variable, calling this player ref. And now down here we can drag out our player reference we can get it and we can check for equal equals object and what we're gonna do is hook that right up here into the other actor and this will do the exact same thing as the cast node was doing and now we need to add a branch node here which you can easily do by holding B when you click left click in the editor and that will create a branch node for you and hook this up and hook that up and then we need to make sure to hook up our player reference back up to the health target and hook this up to true and hook up our set health. And if we double click here, I can make a reroute node and then hook that up to there. Okay, so now we've fixed that. Next thing we're going to want to do is right now our enemy is a cube and that's just going to be our default value so I'm going to right click here and rename this to default enemy mesh and we'll go in here to the event graph and if I drag out the default mesh I can say set mesh you see here it says set static mesh now if we hook this up we see here we get another little node that says new mesh. So if I right click on this and promote it to a variable, I can call this one enemy mesh. And I'm calling this enemy mesh because this is what our enemy is actually going to look like. This is just a default that we can see in the viewport here is the cube. But using this node, I can now change that to anything that I want over here. So if I compile, you see it asks me for a default value for this. So we can actually make this a cone. Compile and save that. Another thing that we can do from this default mesh is we can say set material. And our mesh only has one material on it. 
you notice it's just a white um, basic shape material here so there's only one element and that's why this element index is just zero on some more complicated meshes you'll have multiple materials here and you'll be able to change the index depending on what material you want to change but for us we only have one and here it asks us for another material so I can right click here and promote this to a variable and say enemy mesh material and we can compile and I can give this a default value of whatever material I want. I'll pick this blue emissive that I made, compile and save that. So now I've created four variables that we can set in our child blueprint here. And when I create a child, I'm not going to have to rewrite all of this code. That's the nice thing about having a parent. Everything that you see right here in Master Enemy is automatically going to be implemented in any child that you create. So that saves you a lot of time and a lot of scripting of this copy and paste and stuff like that. And you guys can go as crazy as you want. You can literally, anything you can think up that you can create into a variable, you can add right here. And it will show up in your child blueprints. Last thing I'm going to do in here before we get away from this and create a child is I'm just going to organize our variables. If you guys look over here, it says category default. We can rename this to say my parent variables. And you see now it creates this little category for us and you can move all of your um, variables that we just created into this my parent variable. I'm going to take the player out. Oh, can't. There we go. Put it into components because it's not technically something that we're going to be changing in the child blueprints. But the mesh, the material, and the damage we will be able to. So we can compile and save this. And now we will close our master enemy. And I'm going to right click on it and you see right up at the top it says create child blueprint. So this is how you guys are going to create a blueprint that's going to have everything from the master enemy and then whatever else that you want to script inside the child. So this is like blueprint reproduction here. So we're going to create a child here and we will call this child enemy one. And now if we open up our child, you see it already starts off with this cube. And if you look over here on the components, it says inherited, inherited. So we can't change this. If you try and delete it, it won't let you. So I'm hitting the delete button right now, and I can't get rid of anything. But you can definitely add to it. So if I wanted to add, for example, a particle system to this child, come in here, add a particle system. And we can make this be whatever we want. Let's see, what do we have in here? Sparks. And we'll just put that up here at the top. And we can go in the event graph. And as you guys see here, first thing it does off of begin play, it says parent begin play. And that's just letting you know that it's running all of the script from the parent. So if we want to add something else in here, like for example, we want our child enemy to actually move somewhere. We can add a component and say what is that? projectile movement. And then I will grab this projectile movement out. And I'll say set velocity. And we'll just give it a random velocity here. Say about 5 in the x direction. And now if you go, if you click on this enemy self, if you look over here in the details panel, you'll be able to see my parent variables. So very easily from the details panel here in the child, you'll be able to change damage, the mesh, and the material, and any other variables that you guys decide you want to add in here. 
So for example, I can make the child a little bit stronger than the parent, say like 30. And we can compile and save this. And now if I minimize, I'm going to delete all of our initial enemies that we had and delete this sequencer that we had. Mm, yes. And then I'm going to drag in our master enemy. And I will drag in the child. And you guys can immediately see here that the child has this um, particle system that the parent doesn't. But right now they're both um, white cubes. So let's go into the child, and instead of being blue, we'll make the child red. If I can spell. There we are. Compile and save that. And you see nothing changes because this script isn't going to be run until we hit play. But watch what happens when I hit play. We now have a little cone, and the child has run off somewhere. Let me see if we can find the child. I think the child fell through the floor. All right, let's go back in and look at the child here. Oh, yeah. I forgot to turn off gravity. If we look at our projectile movement, should be a thing about projectile gravity. I'm just not seeing. Oh, here it is. Zero. Compile and save. Now, if we hit play, now you can see. We have a red cone, a blue cone, and these little sparks. And if you can tell, I made it move really slow, but the red cone is actually moving. Now, if I run into the red cone, I lose 30 from my health. If I run into the blue cone, I only lose 15. So as you can see, the red cone is doing everything that the blue cone does, and then some extra. And that is the benefit of having a parent and a child type relationship here. Because in order to get the red cone to do everything the blue cone did, I didn't have to do anything other than basically have this blue cone spawn the, you know, spawn the red cone when I right clicked here and said create child. So let me get out of this game. So that was one child, and you can right click and create as many children as you want you can even create children of the children so if you wanted to hold all of the information from the child so you can but you wanted to add something else to it you can right click here and say create child blueprint and this is the children's child now if you double click in here you see this one comes up looking like the child and it's going to run the parent plus the child plus whatever else we have in here. So if I was to say add another particle system, we can make this smoke. And we'll put that up here. Compile and save. Now I can drag the children's child in here and you see this one is smoking as well as having the sparks and if I hit play it looks just like the other child it's moving it has the sparks but now it also has smoke and now that one's smoking odd but I think those are the regular smoke from the sparks. This one clearly has more. So as you can see, we've created a child here and then a child of a child, and you guys get the point. All right, so hopefully that was helpful for you guys, and if it was, don't forget to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.